What's up guys? I'm doing another tutorial for you today and what I wanted to go over was a deep dive into Docker and basically um, kind of surface and expose um, where the actual data is on the host machine. Um, I had an instance where the server crashed um, and this could also come up if, if the daemon stops or uh, the Docker um, daemon process stops or something like that. You want to be able to recover your actual data and if those containers stop or disappear um, and you haven't committed those containers to a new image you can uh, be in for a bad time. So I'll show you guys where that data actually lives and how you can access it. Um, one thing to note I found out was um, Docker on Mac is a little bit different um, and, and what I'm going to go over here today is, um, is if you're running Docker on a Linux machine, um, it works in a certain uh, way if you run it on a Linux machine, but if you run it on a Mac, it does this weird um, thing with the data where it, it, it doesn't um, use the, uh, the file directories that it says it's using and instead it looks like it like compiles it to a single file so I don't think um, I haven't yet figured out how to uh, translate this to uh, Docker for Mac but I think most instances you're probably running Docker on a Linux machine so this should cover um, those cases um, so right now I am logged into an Ubuntu 14 uh, DigitalOcean droplet um, it's very straightforward. I do have Docker installed already, um, and I have nothing local, so no images, no containers. Um, so why don't we go ahead and uh, run a container? So we'll download an image, we'll run a container, and then we'll play around with that container, just so we have some data. And then I can show you guys like where that data actually lives on the host machine. So what I'm going to do here is Docker run dash it dash d let's grab the ubuntu uh, image and let's run that so that is going to download the ubuntu image off of docker hub it is going to stand up a container of that image and it's going to run it in the background as a daemon process so i'm going to run the <clears throat> so i'm going to run the docker list command and we should see that container running And there it is. So let's log into that container and let's make some edits and make some changes. So I'm going to do docker exec-it. I'm going to pass it the container ID. And then we're going to run bash. So now you can see I am root at container ID. And this is a standard Ubuntu environment. So I don't know. Let's do some stuff. Um, Let's make a directory. And why don't we, let's see if we can download, um, I don't know, maybe node. Okay, so I don't know if you can download Node with if there's a package for it. Let's just um, let's see if we can download some programming language. Okay, so all right, let's I don't know, let's let's try to find something else.
Okay, so we just installed curl. Let's see if we can install a server real quick. So we're going to use Nginx. Hopefully it stands up an actual page. I think it will. We'll use curl to see if it has stood up a website. Yay, okay. So we installed Nginx, we stood up a web server. Um, this, this is a Docker container, so there's no actual exposed IP, but if I curl localhost, I get back my website. Welcome to Nginx, so a little bit of CSS and some HTML. So the point is I did some stuff. I created a directory, I installed curl, I installed Nginx, I made some changes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exit and we're going to get out of the container. So that container still stood up and it's still running. It's been up for four minutes. Um, if I don't commit that container to an image and this container, you know, st stops or um, gets deleted somehow, um, then, you know, I could be out of luck. So for instance, why don't, we do, why don't we stop the docker daemon? So we'll do service docker stop. So now if I run a docker command, I get an error because we stopped docker. Um, so you know, the daemon might stop. Maybe the, there's an outage in the host or something like that. You know, this could happen. But you know, say now I want to I wanna recover that container. Well, we can actually do that. So let's go to the root directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for Docker. Okay, so these are all the um, subdirectories that have the word Docker in them. I think what we want here is, I think user, Now we want var lib docker. So cd var lib docker. Okay, yeah, this is what we want. So if we go over to, this is where all your Docker data is stored, your images, your containers, all that stuff. So let's go over to AUFS and you'll see we have the mount, the layers, and the diff. Now, What's easily accessible and, and in my opinion the most interesting is this diff folder. And what the diff does is it tracks the changes we made to that container um, as we went along and it'll store that information. So if we cd into diff, so these are the layers for the Ubuntu image that we were playing around with. Um, so if we list these by last modified, I think we're going to get the layers, um, I think the layer at the top is going to be the one that we played around with the most recent. So let's cd into that folder, which is the layer ID. Yeah. So what's in this folder are all the directories that we touched when we were last in our Docker container. and. You might, you might be thinking, well, we didn't touch run, we didn't touch var. Well, we did when we installed curl and nginx and all those other things. So if I go into you know, this folder, well, we didn't put anything in there. Um, but what I might be able to do is this. What I might be able to do is find... Oh, well, you know what I know I could do? We could find our nginx uh, web server. So. So it's all there, you know, it's pretty cool. So this is our web server 
that was in our Docker container. So all the information is here. Um, so So it kind of like stores all your information here. Now, if I deleted the container outright with uh, docker rm and then container ID, that would delete these layers. But as long as I didn't delete it outright, it could crash and burn and it doesn't matter. The information is going to be all stored here. So let's relist these by last modified. And let's try like the third layer and see what's in there. I think it's just going to be the standard um, Ubuntu information. Uh, looks like there's nothing in there from what I can see. Let's try one of these other ones. Yeah, just um, the different subcomponents of, uh, of the Ubuntu image. Yeah. But again, what you want is that list ls-t will order them by uh, the most, it'll put the most recent at the top. And the most recent is usually the one that we've been working out of. Um, let's see what the init one is. I think that is the same as the most recent. Yeah, I think what that denotes is the most recent. Oh, no, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, so the init is something different. Don't, don't look into the init. The init is different. Um, but yeah, so if we do, if we order them by most recent, and then we go into the most recent one, all our stuff is there, which is great. Um, and anything that's not here that is in our container is, is going to be in one of these other layers. So this is how you could like salvage, um, you know, files and changes, even if you lost the container, it's all here, it's all on the host machine. Um, it might just be a little uh, difficult to, to find. Um, but you know, like if you know you're looking for a certain folder, like you might be able to do something like this. Um, we can go into diff, and then we can do like find name. What was the name of that folder? Um, my new directory, which is the folder we know we were working out of, or that, that we know we created. Yeah, and it's, it, it'll show us exactly what layer it's in. So, so it's not as you know, mysterious as um, it might be made out to be at first. Um, so these other folders, like layers, this is like metadata that goes along with each layer. So if we look at I'm not 100% sure what that is, but if we go over to yeah. Yeah, so this is like the the metadata that has to do with like the layer. Um just information about this layer, um, but it's not the actual data itself. The data itself is in that diff folder. So what I want to show you guys is let's list out the containers we have. Oh yeah, we have nothing running. So let's start it back up. Service, Docker, start. Let's list out our containers. Now I think if we stop the container Still going to keep everything around, I believe. So let's try that. Yeah, so everything's still there, even with the container stopped. But if we delete it, I think it's going to delete the diffs as well. So it did, it did delete um, 
the diffs on that container. So if I do ls-t, let's order them and let's go into 37b, that's the newest layer. And what we're gonna see is, yeah, none of our new stuff is there. All our new stuff is gone because that was our container. The reason there's still layers here is because the Ubuntu image is still there. And that Ubuntu image was the, um, the majority of, of that um, container. Now watch if I go ahead and delete the Ubuntu, the local Ubuntu image, you can see here, it deleted all the layers. Let's look at diff. Yeah, there's nothing in diff. So if you delete the container and delete the image, it truly does become deleted. But if it just stops or crashes or, or doesn't, or, or the process star, stops, um, you're good. It's still there. You can find it. Um, but if you, if you explicitly delete it with the rm, rmi commands, um, you, will, you will actually lose that data. Um, the folder structure here, var lib, docker, off, diff, might be slightly different depending on the version of Docker you have, but it's, it's the same idea. I think offs could be, um, could be replaced with device mapper, um, but if you just do a find for diff, so like go to root and then just do uh, find name diff, I think, um, Yeah, you'll, you'll find the path if you just look for diff. Um, so if you do, you know, if you have an app running with several Docker containers and everything crashes or the daemon blows up, um, realize that information is on the host machine and it's not cryptic, you know, like it's not, like you could, you could easily salvage your work as long as you haven't explicitly deleted that stuff. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I got for that.